Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Reasons Podcast episode 6 and we are so glad that you spent your time to view this important topic the making of an apologist. You know, I have here with me Dr. Balaji Nongrum who's the lead consultant of Reasons to Believe APAC and you know it's amazing to know Dr. Balaji. I've known him for a few years now and when I came into the field of apologetics Dr. Balaji Nongrum was actually one of my mentors at the time. And uh, it's such an amazing privilege to be able to be working with him now. And, you know, Dr. Balajet has almost 20 years of experience. And uh, in this podcast, we'll be sharing a few thoughts on what makes a good apologist. And we've titled this, you know, uh, podcast as the making of an apologist. And we hope that you viewers will benefit a lot from this podcast as well. First of all, uh, uh, hello to you, Dr. Balajet. Thank no you, Zwala. It's such yeah. a joy to be uh, again here talking to you on a very important uh, topic again so I thank know. you yeah and uh, you know uh, we've traveled together we've uh, done a few things together since you know in terms of uh, speaking to people engaging with people engaging people in their ideas in their workplace in their institutions and so on and so forth so you know uh, when we talk about this thing called apologetics you know, there is a, sometimes people kind of misrepresent uh, apologi apologist to be kind of professional debaters or, you know, people who are at times people who come into this intellectual uh, field mm -hmm. uh, claiming to know everything about the uh, perhaps the biblical worldview or something about, you know, any philosophical ideas and so on and so forth. But I think there are times when we actually have to kind of... Uh, make a basis for why we do this thing apologetics. Mm. So the first question, Dr. Balajit, that I would like to ask you is, why do we do apologetics? And uh, since we are talking about Christian apologetics at times, uh, what are the biblical norms of doing this thing called apologetics? Could you share uh, you know, some light for that? Yes, yeah. thank you, uh, Zwala. Uh, this is a very important question yeah. uh, that uh, you know I have had in my own life with regard to apologetics as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but then coming to your question of why apologetics, and uh, first of all, as you've mentioned, uh, the meaning of Christian apologetics is mm -hmm. basically laying down reasons, yeah. reasons for our faith, for our hope, and uh, or it can also mean, technically speaking, from the um, you know the Greek perspective of the translation of the word apologia sure. is the defense mm -hmm. of the faith. Okay, defense of our faith, mm -hmm. our faith in God, our faith in Christ, our faith in the Christian, the Judeo-Christian worldview. So that is in a nutshell about the meaning of apologetics before we go any further. But then there is also a general meaning to the word apologetics here. Apologetics would also mean generally without necessarily meaning only the defense of our faith. Yeah. It could also mean uh, offering a reason for the rational that yeah. you are taking for any uh, thing sure. in your life or in my life. So I think there is a sense in which, uh, you know, that we are all apologists. Yeah. I can't help but think of um, the quote that I've come across reading the book written by Os Guinness. Mm -hmm. And the title of this book is Full Stock. Okay. Right. And in this book, he talks about the fact that, um, you know, today we all are apologists one way or the other. Now, what does he mean by that? Mm. He basically means that, uh, you know, through our tweet, through our Facebook page uh, write-up or, uh, you know, a website or anything. Yeah. He says, we are all apologists. We are all defending ourselves. We are all offering reasons for uh, whatever it is that we are doing True. and so on and so forth. True. So, Os Guinness argues and he says that uh, we are all apologists. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he argues and closes that argument by saying that we are all in the grand age of the secular apologetics. Mm. Grand mm -hmm. age of secular apologetics. We are all apologists. Mm -hmm. So, in a sense, your question is well taken. Why yeah. Christian apologetics? Yeah. Primarily, we go to the scripture and we... Uh, quote the one passage that is uh, 
uh, the passage that uh, every apologist will go to, yeah. 1 Peter 3.15, yeah. yeah. which basically urges all followers of Christ to always be ready mm. to give a reason for the hope that we have and to do so mm. with gentleness, meekness and respect. Mm. And I think that is very crucial. Yeah. Now, of course, there are many other passages in the scriptures with that we can uh, look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 to 5 that talks about you know, the, the fact that, you know, we are uh, in a war, yeah. so to say, figuratively speaking. Uh, and these arguments and laying down of evidence in is part of the arsenal yeah. that we put forth or we bring forth. Mm -hmm. And so apologetics in that sense becomes much more significant and central to the life of a follower of Christ. Sure. And so I think there is... A need for that there is a warrant for that mm -hmm. uh, because scripturally the bible urges us yeah both in the old testament and the new testament as well sure right sure so i think that is uh, something that is very very important mm -hmm. and so why apologetics it becomes important that we give reasons yeah and uh, but if we don't then it means we are ga going against the very tight of uh, you know uh, commandment or we are not being uh, obedient yeah. to the call or to the invitation that the Bible gives all of us to offer reasons for our faith of our hope. Yeah. So I mean that those are really interesting and wonderful points. And I cannot but recall, you know, what the late Norman Geisler said. Mm -hmm. We do apologetics because of three reasons. Mm -hmm. Why? One, God commands it. Okay. Second, reason demands it. Mm -hmm. Three, the world needs it. So I think you brought that out beautifully in, you know, mm -hmm. in what you had just extrapolated. So, you know, I just want to ask you a very personal question. You know, you've been in the field of apologetics for almost 20 years now. And that means you've committed your life uh, into this field. Mm -hmm. So what led you into this thing called apologetics? So, yeah, uh, I think, um, uh, thank you for asking. And I think um, you're right. Uh, I, to be very honest with you, Zwala, I did not plunge myself into Christian apologetics intentionally. Yeah. Uh, it was more of a thing that was, um, I was thrown into it, so mm. to say. Mm. See, when I committed my life immediately after my conversion or after I committed my life to Christ, mm -hmm. and I landed up in the university, sure. wherein I was bombarded by questions, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from all different perspectives, yeah, with regard to my faith, questions such as why believe in Christ, yeah. uh, why the Bible, mm -hmm. yeah, and many other things. Why is it that you uh, have Christ and uh, not any other options, or no. uh, why not uh, other deities? Sure. So, I was bombarded with several questions, mm -hmm. and so, as a result of my responding to these questions. I, um, you know, I was um, introduced to the world of Christian apologetics. And back in the day, we didn't have the uh, internet. And yeah. so you can imagine, and it was quite tedious even to get one book on yeah. Christian apologetics. Yeah. So we had to borrow from uh, mm -hmm. friends and seniors who were much more, mm -hmm. uh, you know, experienced into yeah. this. And so we would read these books and then, you know, uh, lean upon some of these support. So that is one. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the other important reason of why I was let into this is I was somehow inclined to respond to the issues that people would raise all around. Sure. See, during my time, I remember in the campuses mm -hmm. uh, when I was in, and uh, uh, I got myself admitted into the sign uh, into the veterinary sciences, mm -hmm. and so we uh, were predominantly surrounded by scientific discussion yeah. so yeah. to say and so uh, one important question that uh, was uh, introduced to me early on was the issue of science and faith true science and faith was something like you know mm -hmm. and um, it was a given so yeah. to say yeah and so i found myself having to defend or having to talk about what is the intersection between science and faith. Mm. And so that also led me into the field of Christian apologetics and much more so into scientific apologetics. Sure. And so uh, this really became something that I really plunged into big time mm. uh, as a result of all of this. Sure. Then furthermore, thirdly, I would say 
that uh, I also uh, felt the need to offer positive reasons to mm. people who may not even think about yeah. these things yeah. and these matters. And so that is where uh, I would end up, uh, you know, offering, um, you know, the positive evidences, both from scripture, both from uh, my life. So, mm. uh, you know, these are some of the things that has really led me into Christian apologetics. Sure, sure. I mean, that's a wonderful journey. And, you know, part of what I liked about what you just said was giving positive reasons and not simply giving, mm. giving you know, negative reasons to people why they should not, uh, you know, think about other perhaps worldviews or any other way, you know, and I really appreciate that about you as well. You know, you basically studied in a veterinary science school. You got into scientific apologetics. And, uh, you know, and when people think about apologetics, people have this idea that um, this thing called apologetics is only for people who are there mm -hmm. in the intellectual field. Okay. So people kind of get scared when they try to come to apologies. Oh, no, I have to read so much. I have to study so much. You know, I'm not equipped to handle so and so forth. So the question right now is, is apologetics for everyone or is it only for a specific group of called people? So, you know, what is your take on that? Yeah, I, I think um, that is a question that uh, we very often get asked. Yes, uh, I'm sure, Zwala, you would also agree. And it's a question that, you know, very often you will hear people say, this is not my cup of tea. Yeah, yeah. It, in, it, it uh, um, engages with the intellectual stuff and it's yeah. very heavy. I'm not the intellectual type, so to say. But uh, let, let me again go back to the scripture. Yeah. You see, the Bible actually, especially with the Great Commission, mm -hmm. Jesus said, go ye unto the ends of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, what is the task that was given to uh, the commandment to go unto mm -hmm. the ends of the world? Mm -hmm. To make disciples. Yes. To make disciples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at this Great Commission, mm -hmm. and when you think of the time in which we are in today, mm -hmm. uh, it is a time where I think... You and I uh, cannot help but agree that uh, we have the task of taking the absolute truth and engaging in a rel relativistic culture. Yeah. 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 And then we have the task of uh, also uh, taking this exclusive truth about Jesus Christ, the uniqueness of the truth about Christ, sure. and speaking to a pluralistic culture. Sure, sure. And then thirdly, we have the task mm -hmm. of, uh, um, you know, uh, taking this supernatural truth in a secular culture. Yeah. Now, yeah. these are the three important challenges that I would say, mm -hmm. in light of the Great Commission, mm -hmm. the Bible also tells us in Jude chapter, uh, in Jude verse 3, you remember, it says, earnestly contend for the faith. Okay. Earnestly contend for the faith. And I think this put together uh, warrants that all of us, all of us, yeah. ought not to only be disciples, but we also ought to be apologists. Technically speaking, okay. So you are not only there is no distinction as such that you and I need to differentiate between being a disciple and an apologist. Yeah. I believe the role of a disciple is to uh, lay down, yeah, the claims of the Christian truth sure. in a very systematic way, sure. in a way that people can understand it. Sure. And that is why I believe that apologetics, based on these commands that I have just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, warrants that we all actually. Uh, train ourselves, get ourselves equipped in this very task so that we fulfill the mandate that is given to True. actually meaningfully engage with people. That is why I think you would agree that, you know, uh, the task of Reasons to Believe uh, APAC is to actually help people uh, in, in four important areas, right? To explore mm. yeah. and to engage mm. and to examine mm. and to equip yeah. people who are yeah. asking these questions. So I think yeah. um, apologetics is for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And I totally agree with, uh, you know, what you just said. You know, there's a very famous quote about people coming into philosophy. It says, mm. every person is a philosopher. Mm. The only difference is some are good ones and some are bad ones. Mm. And, uh, you know, this famous quote can, uh, can actually be said for you know, uh, people who come into this thing called apologetics as well. Mm. And, you know, uh, what is interesting is, 
uh, when you just said about, you know, this thing called apologetics is for everyone. Every one of us has the burden to do it, has the responsibility for proclaiming what we believe in. Now, the question that comes to mind is this. Mm -hmm. What do you think in your experiences and also, you know, after having have met a lot of people, you know, some of them are much senior to you, some of them could be younger to you, mm -hmm. some of them could be your contemporaries and so on and so forth. What do you think makes a good apologist? I think this is something that is vitally important and especially for the viewers out there who are, you know, uh, are uh, budding young apologists in the making. What advice could you give to make a person the best or at least a good apologist that he or she can become? Yeah, I think uh, that's a very good... Uh, yeah. uh, I think it can also be made into a talk itself, yeah. the making yeah. of uh, a good articulative yeah. apologist, Christian apologist. Yeah. And I think I'm reminded, uh, Zwala, of a quote mm -hmm. give, uh, made by Bertrand Russell who once yeah. said, that uh, most Christians would would rather die rather than think. And uh, I know he said yeah. that yeah. back in the day. Yeah. But the point is this, that it seems that, you know, thinking is not uh, part and parcel of uh, uh, the general uh, mm. population in terms of thinking. Mm. More, more and more we find that we are not becoming reflective people. Uh, we are becoming less and less reflective. Yeah. You know, in a 1980 Gallup poll of the religion, yeah. uh, it uh, actually has come up with this finding statistics that uh, today, most Christians especially uh, are uh, emphasizing more on the revival of our feelings rather than the revival of our thoughts. Oh, yes. And so that is a very sad commentary mm. on the generation or the culture in which we are living in. True, true. And that is why I think your question makes uh, all the more an important one as to what actually goes into the making of a good apologist. Mm. The first and the foremost uh, that I would glean upon is the commandment that Jesus makes in the Gospel of Matthew, mm. which talks about the commandment mm. that you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your strength, and then with all of your mind. And I think discipleship, especially from biblical point of view, is to actually also have the role of the mind in discipleship. Mm. And in order to do that, I think we need to actually obey that command, which is to love God with all of our mind. Yeah. And I think there is also a book by J.P. Morland mm -hmm. uh, on, uh, with the same title of okay. loving God with all of our mind as well. Mm. Now, so given that as the premise, mm. I would actually go a little bit further in saying that we not only need to love God with all of our minds, but we also need to disciple mm. ourselves, disciple our mind. Mm. Yeah. By what? By study. Yeah. By study. Study of what? Study of the scripture, mm. study of uh, uh, books written by people who have gone ahead of us True. Uh, and uh, people who, um, uh, who have practiced this very, uh, who have obeyed this call. Mm. And so we need to learn from the best apologists yeah. who have written. So we need to go and dive deeper mm -hmm. in understanding yeah. not only the scripture, but also the doctrines that we believe, the essential Christian doctrines. Yeah. And then also learn to actually go deeper in learning to look at different issues in life from a Christian perspective, from the lens of the Judeo-Christian worldview. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn to look at the Bible, look at the essential Christian claims, we need to also look at the different issues from the biblical worldview, but we also need to learn to look at the different worldviews that are available mm -hmm. to see as to how do they interpret the reality of this world that we are in. Sure. So I think that becomes all the more important to go deeper and to have a very systematic study habits as well. Yeah. So we need to actually learn also from others. Mm -hmm. Now, you have mentioned that, you know, uh, I have actually... Uh, learn mm. Christian apologetics not by just simply doing it myself yeah. but it is also looking at uh, people and mm. voices of mm. people who have made sense exactly from the faith perspective exactly. and so learning from them becomes very important yeah. sitting at the yeah. feet of those 
who would teach. And mm. God has gifted many people like that. Mm. And so I think that is something that is important. Yeah. And please remember yeah. that in order to be more effective apologists, mm -hmm. we also need to also not only learn from these best people that are there, yeah. but we also need to inculcate and develop yeah. the habit of uh, or keeping the goal and the aim yeah. of learning to develop our own approach. Exactly. Yeah? yeah, that is going to be very crucial mm -hmm. on learning mm -hmm. to develop your own approach, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over a period of time. Yeah. And so that is going to be very, you. and then last but not the least, it is also setting ourselves uh -huh. goals. Exactly. Goals such as intellectual goals. Mm -hmm. You see, we need to actually uh, keep equipping ourselves, keep growing in mm -hmm. this very uh, journey that we are in because that is going to be uh, very crucial as we talk to people, as we engage, as we explore, sure. as we equip uh, and help others also to examine what is it that they believe and why is it that they believe. Sure. And so we are going to actually have to read, have a systematic study habit and so on and so forth. So this is going to be very, very crucial for us. Sure, sure. Those are powerful and important points and I hope that the viewers, you know, you take that to heart and, you know, uh, follow the advice that Dr. Balajid had actually told us. And I mean, uh, I've traveled with Dr. Balajid uh, to a few cities around the country as well. You know, we've spoke to people, engaged with people. And because of the experiences that he has had by studying, by following the footsteps of, you know, the big apologists and so on and so forth, I've actually seen, you know, a lot of people being touched by what you have shared with them and, you know, how you have actually connected with people as well. And I hope that our viewers will also be able to follow, you know, not similarly, but in ways that, you know, the Almighty would actually use you in that sense. So we hope that this, you know, uh, the advice that was just shared would actually be useful for all of us as well. So the, 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 I think the last question and the most important one would be, you know, we were talking about getting equipped, talking about, you know, reading correct books. Uh, following the footsteps of, uh, you know, the people who are already out there. So the thing is, it talks about training. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul had actually uh, encouraged Timothy to be spiritually trained and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So the qu the question is, uh, does Reasons to Believe APAC have any kind of uh, training programs that it has set up, you know, uh, in any part of the country or anywhere? What type of uh, academy, what type of training course does it have? Could you just share a few light on that so that our viewers would actually be able to join us for these potential training programs as well. Yes, thank you. Yeah. So Allah, and I think um, uh, the entire posture or yeah. the entire aim of uh, our ministry yeah. of Reasons to Believe APAC is to uh, actually, uh, you know, uh, go along the lines of the invitation that the Bible gives us. Yeah. You know, if you read Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, it says, mm -hmm. come, let us reason together. Yeah. And I think that is the mental posture in terms of our engagement with people. Yeah. Come, let us reason together. It yeah. is not just like, you know, come, I'll teach you <laughs> or I'll do this or do that. But yeah. it is come, let us reason yeah. together. So that is the general invitation yeah. that we ourselves are practitioners mm -hmm. as we invite others mm -hmm. to also participate with us on this journey mm -hmm. and one of the important goal as we have also said in the beginning mm -hmm. is that we want to show that there are sound reasons sound reasons and the systematic scientific research also demonstrates mm -hmm. that the Bible and the truth that is there mm -hmm. is also something that is being affirmed mm -hmm. by sound reasoning and scientific research that is being done. We have a lot of material uh, in that area as well, in the area of scientific apologetics. Mm. Now, having said that, I would like to actually restate mm. that we have two important goals. Sure. One is that we have Christian apologetics in general, mm. but we are also specialized in scientific apologetics, yeah. Yeah. in helping people understand that the intersection of science and faith mm -hmm. is not something that is a swan in enemy. Right. And they are friends and they are allies. And that is what we can demonstrate through sound reasoning and scientific research. Now, in doing so, all of this, I also want to actually tell our listeners mm -hmm. that um, we are not only concerned about arguments. Yeah. We are also concerned about the way we live our life. 
You see, apologetics, uh, Zwala, in my opinion, is not just about the ability of laying down reasons for people to consider the sure. Christian faith. Sure. Uh, I think uh, that is verbal reasoning that mm. we can offer. But at the end of the day, it is your life and my life that is the greatest of all apologia yeah. that we can offer to people. True. And it is in that context that we organize the different trainings and mm. different engagement that we have with people, as sure. I have mentioned Sure. Right. And so in doing so, we um, have actually several layers of uh, training. Sure. And um, we, uh, first of all, used to have and we are still having the School of Christian Apologetics okay. that is being conducted all across the country. Sure. And it is both over the weekend or over a series or a period of three months, six months. And we have courses that is available for the introductory advanced, intermediate, and uh, so on and so forth. Mm. And through the School of Christian Apologetics, we have designed the courses yeah. to help people to actually systematically mm. learn uh, the science and the art of Christian apologetics. Sure. So that is uh, the number one important point that we have to offer. Yeah. Secondly, we also have this event that is called as the Reasons Academy, sure. uh, which is being held annually. Yeah. And in Reasons Academy, it is over a period of one week where we invite the best of speakers and resource person in this very field that mm -hmm. we've been talking about. So that at least we through this one week period, we give people an opportunity yeah. to interact, to learn from the best. Yeah. Similarly, this year in the month of October, we will mm -hmm. be having the Reasons Academy in the city of Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will be having similar training programs, um, you know, in, in different parts of the country as well mm. to cater to this specific vision and mission of RTB. Sure. So I think uh, these are the two important four. But finally, another opportunity that we provide our friends who are interested to join with this very j uh, vision that we have is to join us through these chapters. Yeah. We have several chapters all across the country that we've already set up. Yeah. Uh, and if there are people who are interested, Zola, to join and to start a chapter, even if there is none, then they are also invited to connect with us so that we can help. And through these chapters, what do we do? Mm. And I'm sure that you will be able to actually talk more yeah. about even those chapters as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So the, in India, we have about five chapters that are established now. We have one in Shillong, we have in one in Aizol, we have in Bangalore, and we have, have in uh, Hyderabad, and also the city of Vizak as well. And we are currently looking at, you know, different places where we can establish these chapters as well. So if you are from the, those regions and you would like to be uh, part of the chapter as well, kindly follow us and contact us on our social media platforms as well. And, uh, you know, at this time, I would like to thank you, Dr. Balajit, for uh, sharing your thoughts on these five important questions on the making of an apologist. And we hope that you viewers would have benefited from the talk that we have. And if you like these type of contents and if you feel that you have been blessed by these, kindly like and, sh and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And do follow us on our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter as well. And also, if you are interested on our training programs as well it'll be posted on our social media uh, platforms as well and kindly contact us if you want to know more and with that i think we end our podcast today thank you so thank much you. for your time thank, thank you Allah. thank you viewers for listening and giving time uh, to us again and we hope that you are blessed stay tuned for more thank you